All right, hey guys, welcome back to uh, Unit 15, Lecture 2, uh, somewhat cleverly, not very cleverly, uh, titled The Social Construction of a New Reality. Um, so last time we talked about changing the world and how changing the world is changing the machine. Uh, several weeks ago, we talked about how the machine works in real time and the process by which we did that, we used uh, Zimbardo's prison study to illustrate it, was called the social construction of reality. And we talked about the fact that when you enter into a space, you literally, with the help of other people, cooperate to build the machine in real time. Um, it's something that usually is so uh, seamless that we don't really notice that we're doing it. But of course, all of society is imagined into existence, and it's a sort of cooperative, uh, cooperative imagining that builds whatever machine we're going to have. Uh, to review, um, the steps of the social construction of reality are you enter a space with other people. You're social, in order to socially construct reality, you're with somebody else. Although, at deeper sociological levels, we can talk about the fact that there is social influence that exists for you even when you're by yourself. But we're not going to complicate it right now. We're in intro. Uh, end of intro. Uh, so enter a space with other people, you interpret the symbols, determine your place in the social structure. So you walk in and you determine that you're in a classroom or you walk in and uh, a cop's in the classroom, in which case you have to ask questions about are we, the questions that basically get at the idea of are we really in sociology class or is there something else going on? We talked about that when we dealt with the social construction of reality. Uh, determine uh, your place in the social structure, choose behaviors based on the um, particularly appropriate status and the norms that are attached to that status. Um, sometimes, oops, sorry, I'm off camera. Uh, some, we talked about the sometimes step. Doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes a negotiation is, uh, is necessary. We saw a ton of negotiating with regard to the Stanford Prison Study. We talked about some situations in which um, I think we talked about uh, about um, in particular women being sexually harassed as being a, a, a case of, and I don't mean to, to be blithe about it, but a case in which uh, we can interpret that through the lens of social construction of reality of two people determining different places in the social structure and therefore needing to negotiate about where, uh, about where they actually are. And then we talked about the fact that once we have defined a situation as real, remember this is one of my favorite quotes in sociology, uh, the Thomas theorem, once we define a situation as real, it has real consequences for us. All right, quick review of the social construction of reality. Um, if I had my machine up there again, uh, what, I would, what I would make note of or what I, would, what I would want you guys to think about right now is the fact that almost all of the time, this whole thing goes off seamlessly because we all agree. We all define things in the same way. We all are oriented basically in the same way by the collective consciousness. We define where we are in similar ways. Almost every day, things go off pretty seamlessly. Um, and in which case, if things are going off seamlessly, society is staying stagnant. Now, there are ways in which society being stagnant isn't the end of the world, but We've also enumerated tons of ways in which our society is failing to make us happy or to treat people equally, and in which case it makes sense for us to want to change things. So how do we do that? Um, the place where we do this in a very concrete uh, way is here. So you walk into a space with other people and we interpret the symbols, and if we all interpret them the same way and we all interpret the same set of symbols, everything stays the same. But what if? What if somebody acts deviantly? What if instead of it being instead of it being all the same familiar symbols, there is a new idea is expressed. An idea, something spoken in words, but but spoken either in a way or a spoken as a concept that people had not thought of before. A new idea, those words exist as a symbol in that space. And they are things that can be interpreted just like all the familiar symbols. An act of deviance carries meaning just like any other act. What if it is a 
new behavior. Again, it is a symbol that holds meaning. Now, when we think of deviance, what we generally think about is, I think what we generally think about is if I'm acting deviantly, the focus is on me. What I'm saying right now is that if we are in a situation, a social situation, multiple people are there, and one person acts deviantly, they aren't the only person who is taking account of what's going on. Everybody else potentially notices that. That thing that you did or you said, if you are the person who acts deviantly, who communicates a new idea or behaves in a different way than people are accustomed to, when you do that, you have basically said, what we're doing here is building a machine. What about this different part? What do you guys think about this? What do you think about this idea that we don't usually use to build the machine? Or what do you think about this way of acting that we don't usually use to build the machine? When you do that, and it is, in some ways, it is, I, I don't want to make it sound like then everything works out fine because it'll piss some people off. But it also holds the potential to be something that other people say, take a look at this piece and say, yeah, you know what? I think I do want to incorporate that. And then they act on it or they consider that idea and they communicate it to other people. And what happens is this thing, this new building block that you have introduced into this process that remember is going on moment by moment all the time. What you have done is introduced a piece that if it gets adopted by other people has the potential to change the world. Um, I don't want to make it sound like it's just that easy so go out and treat everybody equally and everything's going to work out. It obviously is not that easy. I'm not trying to uh, suggest that it is but I am going to suggest that it can be the type of thing that e that anybody, it doesn't have to be a grand act, as long as it introduces something new into this process, it can change the world. Um, this happened in 1969. Um, I mean, it's happened a bunch of times, but in particular, the example that I'm going to have you guys watch is an example from 1969. Uh, a black transgendered woman named uh, Marsha P. Johnson uh, was at a bar and uh, the bar got raided by the police and she had the possibility of acting according to the social construction of reality, acting in all the same ways that transgender people had always acted in when confronted by the police. She made a decision to act in a different way. And it is as a result of that that we have the new uh, society, a new machine that that in which most people in America now don't believe that gay or transgender people should be discriminated against. It starts with one act. Um, and that is what you're going to see in the next video. So I will, you'll watch that. I'll come back afterwards for the last video of our entire course. Um, and we'll talk a little bit. We'll break down what happened and we will talk about, um, I guess, my final words about changing the world. So I will, you guys watch Marsha P. Johnson and I will see you after.